Yeah, half an hour would be great. Oh, hi. I'm Susie Joy Lever. And, um, and uh, oh, hello, and I'm Sunday Gilchrist. Hi. Thank you, Sunday. Well, I've written a book about my insights on relationships called Travelling Kites. And I know Sunday through a, a wonderful a network called The Silver Tent for women over 50. And uh, I just was asking advice and ideas about how I could get my book to a wider audience. And Sunday said, well, maybe we could just have a conversation about relationships to see how that goes. So here I am. I work with voice. Um, I write my own songs. And I've had a lot of experience of living, lots of ups and downs. And I hope that what we're going to share will be of help. So over to you, Sunday, and explain a little bit about you, please. Thanks, Susie. Um, yes, I, I uh, am a relationship coach and I specialize in estrangement. And yet um, my, my real love is around communication and all things relationship, really. Um, yeah. And, and so when you suggested that we would have a little conversation about relationships, I thought that's a great idea. So, yeah, that's where I am. So do you want to kick off with a question for both of us? Yeah, well, we had a little chat before we got we jumped on here and we sort of thinking about, well, how do we start this off? And um, I came up with a suggestion of the question, um, what is a relationship? What is relationship? And um, so this is very in the moment, the thoughts around it. And there's so many different types of relationships. And I suppose the, for me, the meaning of the word itself it's in relation to something else, um, which is interesting when you look at a relationship of self. But let me start with something that's external to me. So relationship with something other than me um, and how I relate to that. And in the broadest context, it's, you know, I am relating to everything that's in my environment and spiritual esoterical on the ground moment I am relating with everything and my particular interest is besides having a relationship myself my particular interest is in how to have great relationships with other people and that's been fundamental when I think about it, it's been fundamental to my life because I see that to get wants needs uh, fun pleasure um, the creation of life it, it is about relating with other people other things as well and relating with other people and like many of us I guess my relationship started when I was little you know and the bits that I don't remember and I see how patterns in my behavior my relational patterns started very young you know maybe even before I was born if you really want to go into that um, into that realm um, and definitely I can remember that things that have occurred in my life as a youngster I can see that I have certain relational patterns some are great <laughs> some are not so great and it's always an inner inquiry as to well what what happened there you know those moments where relationships sort of like go awry or both people don't get their wants or needs met or one of them does and the other doesn't. And sometimes there's when nobody gets their wants and needs met, you know, and I find it fascinating, this, um, this world of relationships and how words and communication and my voice has been the main um, tool for having relationships with other people. And yet I know that there's so much more, the energetic, the I'm sensing that as we evolve as human beings, maybe we did have um, extra sensory perceptions, maybe we did have telepathy, maybe we did have more um, relational communication skills and tools than we currently have. And it, it sort of blew my world away when I there's a thing about the words actually are seven percent of the message, and you think <laughs> I did a good job of explaining myself there. 
and the other person hasn't checked out exactly what you meant or what I meant with those 7% of words that the, of the 7% of the message that I gave you and um, they trot off thinking that they're understanding <laughs> and then it does it something goes wrong and oh that's what you meant you know and it, it is I think for me it's a lovely dance between both people or more than one people you know the dance of relationship is it's and the amount of time and energy to have a good communication to be present to have ears heart and mind open you know those are some of the core ingredients that I think to have a, a, re, a good relationship with another person that's what you need there's lots more and um yeah, that that's that's where my starter for what is really, and I'd be I'd love to hear what what your um, expansion on what is a relationship, what is relationship, Susie. Well, thank you. There's so many strands there that I could sort of move with and things. I suppose my basic thought is it's how authentic can we be with ourselves and with another person i mean obviously we, we can relate in all sorts of ways we relate from roles we relate in a sometimes mechanical way you know we we might go into a shop and buy something and not really respect and and be aware of the person the other side of the counter um so i think my aim in relationship is relating it's like relating from the core of who i am to the other person and that might not be with words that might be with a smile when you were talking about the words i just flashed into mind that i learned so much i spent a lot of time in southern spain where i went to language school and i speak about intermediate um spanish now but as anybody knows who's ever learned language it's full of opportunities for misunderstandings and yet somehow when you want to relate to someone in another country if there's a heart connection somehow it's it's bigger than the words i mean along the way with the, the, the words and the language there can be lots of embarrassment and mis miscommunication and then you know in our own language and i was born in england there are so many accents there are so many words that have different meanings because as you say we we learn so much from before the womb our early days, which we don't remember, pre-verbal. And, you know, there's just a, such a minefield of pitfalls of potential non-communication. And yet, miraculously, it is possible to communicate in a way that we can be heard, that we can express ourselves and we can receive. So I guess the relationship is how do we relate to another person? Or as you said, we're relating all the time, whether it's to animals, to the natural world, you know, how do we relate to the weather? That's, um, and it was an interesting one, particularly in Britain, where people talk about the weather a lot, you know, and so it, it's just, it's a dance of the moment, isn't it? How in this moment am I relating to what is around me? And I guess, you know, how much can we be in the present moment? Because as you've already mm. said, relationships are full of unconscious patterns of behavior um, and you and I are fortunate because we're in loving relationships and therefore we are finding a way through all the ups and downs of different personalities sharing their lives together of, of, of communicating of relating of, of keeping it alive and flowing and joyful mm. yeah yeah there was something that popped up yeah it's gone now <laughs> for listening to yeah we I am lucky I am in a relationship with a loving man who is open to sharing feelings and thoughts to some degree and his personality type my personality type personality type are very different you know and it is said that you choose versions of your parents and all that and this is my second marriage and there was a few explores into who is my ideal partner between the first and the second one. And at that point in my life, I wasn't really, um, 
I suppose I still wasn't consciously choosing. I wasn't, I was looking more for a vibrational match rather than a, a tick list of, even though I had made a tick list, um, some of those things aren't the qualities or the aspects that he brings with him to our relationship. And, and yet, you know, it's um, on a couple's relationship. I think the difficult thing is not becoming so immersed in each other somehow. There's a this sort of I want to go like this, you know, a bit like a river. And, and I've got a lovely little story about a river um, that we sort of like come together, go wide, get narrow, go wide, you know, and that constant flow of the change in because nothing's constant in, our, in my relationship, you know, with my relationship with myself. There's always some days I feel buoyant, some days I feel flat, you know, and, and he's just the same. And I guess that's like the weather, <laughs> to bring in your point. Some days we're rainy, some days we're sunny, you know, and it, for me, it's about being OK with that. And one of the most delicious things I think that we've learned is that we give each other the heads up when we're having a rainy day it doesn't seem to be necessary to do that when we're having a sunny day in ourselves you know it's sort of readable and how you how I can read him and how he can read me so even before he said um, I'm having a bit of a down day or I feel angry you know in the past I would have taken that personally and now I've like happily you know let him have that <laughs> don't need to take it on and try and fix him or sort him or soothe him out. And I, there are times when I say, is there anything that I can do for you? Um, but and what I'm noticing is that, like you talked about authenticity, Susie, and, you know, like when, we, when I speak my truth, I find that it seems to rub out the lie of trying to pretend that I'm all right. So if I say to Stephen, I'm feeling really cross, and then perhaps talk about what that is, it might even be him. That's where we find our most sticky thing, you know, when I'm feeling cross towards him. And if I'm feeling cross towards something else, he's, he's, he can hold that, you know. And, but what I'm saying here is when I speak the truth of it, somehow it disempowers the energy behind that withhold that I had. Not just because I'm relating with him, because I'm relating with myself in that moment, speaking the truth. And it seems to free up that ball of whatever the anger is and it's strangely it disappears and I think when speaking the truth although that might be really uncomfortable somehow it it not speaking the truth is a bit like um I see we come to these problems and they're a bit like the eye of a needle and you've got to squeeze yourself through the eye of the needle and then once you've spoken once I've spoken my truth, it's like expansion comes. And that's where I'm at today because I had a relational problem that I've dealt with this morning. It was quite a big one for me. And my energy's lifted. My, my sense of self-worth has lifted. My self-value has lifted. So, yeah, having problems in relationships is the vehicles for growth. Like all, all I, my experience is it leads to expansion. It might lead to some horrible wobbly bits and it may not go right. And yet there's a willingness in me to keep exploring and being curious around lifting myself into a higher vibration so that I can do what I need to do on the planet and be the sort of person that I want to hang around with because I'm hanging around with myself a lot, so I might as well like me. <laughs> yeah, that was that felt really good to share that. You know, it felt really um yeah, it's lovely to be able to explain in that sort of free flow way what comes around relationships. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> You picked up on a core thing, really, that, that really it's the relationship with ourselves. And mm. when we're feeling unable to express something, particularly, as you say, it's sticky, and it's difficult, we're kind of shutting down on ourselves. Sometimes that expression for me needs to be, I need to write it down, I need to say it out aloud, but not directly to the other person, so that I get clear 
you know, what it is about me. Um, but you're right. I mean, for me, we're here to be as, as, as alive as we can be, you know, to embrace the magic of life, all the little things and be, be, be as present as we can be. And I was someone who had a background of being very numb and very scared and very, um, very closed, really. And, you know, my life is so different now that I'm more able to be myself. And, you know, I really, yeah, there are lots of things you said that I really liked. And of course now, because I can't quite remember what, what they were, but, but it is, um, you know, you were saying about problems in relationships, all relationships will have problems. I think some people, I think, as I used to imagine that other relationships don't have all these dramas. And one of the things when I started writing my book, it was inspired by talking to people and realizing how universal the essence of relationships was. And that, you know, people were identifying with, you know, how do two people negotiate very, very different ways of looking at the world. And, um, you know, and, and that's what's really, lovely when people have read my book because they said there is it's like reminders and identification even though it's a very personal insight with my particular personality and experiences so i think yeah relationships are really life because we're not kind of living on mountain tops on our own we're not supposed to be we're supposed to be learning how to relate as human beings with all our different shades and colors of our ever changing personalities particularly at the moment when there is so much um, change and contrast and unsettledness and insecurities and fears, but also opportunities for great uh, transformation and freedom and expression and coming out of the boxes and coming out of structures that were very familiar, allowing a lot of new things to, to be birthed and expressed and shared. Yeah, the collective creativity of us all. Collective relationship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Human. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it is at this dance. We both said dance, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, the um, relational aspects of two people wanting different things and how do we... Because I, I used to think, you know, like it's always grated with me when I'm talking about an individual, a couple relationship now, or any, not just man woman. Um, but I'd like to speak a little bit about the man woman thing because I've got a funny tale to tell. But this um, relationships between two people and how it used to grate with me when somebody said, oh, you know, relationships are compromise. And I always thought, oh, compromise, it doesn't sit well with me. If I'm compromising myself, it doesn't feel that I'm honouring me and also not honouring the other person. So I've had a little bit of a dig, a dig into this and explored it. And for me, what um, when I don't, if I'm compromising myself, you know, like the biggest indicator for me is tuning into my resentment, you know, and that's such a beautiful um, tool to recognize that actually if I'm feeling resentful I'm dishonoring everybody so how do I get past resentment you know that was the next thing you know how do I do something that I don't really want to do when somebody else wants me to do it you know all of that and it it for me it's a movable feast you know there, there'll be days when I'm asked exactly the same requirement and some days I'll feel resentful and some days I won't and I think okay so what's going on there and I've ne not yet managed to sort that one out. But resentment, I found, is really a useful tool for me to, to tune in when I know that I'm dishonouring myself. And if I'm dishonouring me, I'm dishonouring everybody because I'm putting out some sort of energy that isn't harmonious, isn't authentic, isn't true, isn't real. So I came up with the word of um, relinquish. And that, for me, is a conscious choice to actually do something that it wouldn't be my preference to do and I'm not carrying resentment around it either. So that that's quite a massive leap into, well, am I just denying myself? Am I just kidding myself that I'm doing this as in a relinquishing way rather than a compromising way? 
So there's a whole packet of work in that to explore, you know, like how do I give when somebody's asking me and I don't really want to? Because I don't always want to say no. You know, sometimes I want to do something that doesn't feel completely in harmony. And I know some people don't do that. And maybe my background has taught me that to override my no a lot. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. So we, where is our authentic no? Where is our authentic yes? How can I gauge this? So for me, looking at resentment was really, oh, I don't feel that I want to do that. You know, that sort of thing. And then weighing up how much it would cost me to say no to this person. <laughs> like, because I, I had quite a violent childhood. You know, if I said no, sometimes I'd get hit. So, you know, I'd get shouted at, you know. And and it, even though my children are adults now, you know, like honouring somebody's no is something that I've had to learn from the other side of honouring somebody else's no. So my energy is probably different to yours in that I'm a sort of push energy. Um, so I pushed hard for what I wanted, you know, and I can be really, my ex-husband once said, bless him, you get people to do things they don't want to do, you know, and I thought, wow, go me. <laughs> but Oh, go me. <laughs> so all that explore of, um, just that one word really that um, compromise is relationship a compromise and I, I don't know you know I'm still on that I explore with that but the other thing to bring in I, actually do you want to speak to that before I go no, into I think the that's a really powerful thing because for a lot of people um, that's their belief that you know people perhaps choosing to live on their own which for some people is the best thing to do I, I lived on my own for 11 years before I met my partner David which is partly why it was such a challenge negotiating and learning I think it's also about you know do we what are we wanting I, I'm an Aries and that makes me very restless and very much doing my own thing and sometimes rather arrogant and very impatient and not always respectful of somebody else's point of view and it, it's that as you say that balance between am I being true to myself or am I just doing my own thing forgetting that being in a relationship actually means give and take it actually means do I would I rather be at peace or would I rather be right it's about you know being kind to the person that I love and so for me it's I often think it's a very good break on the part of me that can be quite selfish and quite arrogant and quite um, intolerant, which, you know, obviously there are aspects of that that can be helpful when they're too extreme. They're just not very nice to be around. So um, in terms of compromise, I feel like it's choices. You know, I'm not actually legally married, so I've chosen and rechose several times to stay and you know to, to to share my life and to live with my partner and I think you know compromise is it's a heavy word and it really to me suggests losing yourself in another person mm. and you know for me it's I'm, I'm living with my best friend who's delighted for me when I'm you know when I'm shining when I'm when I'm kind of empowering myself when I'm taking steps forward um, so, yeah, I think compromise, I think it's more give and take, I think, and, and it's, it's probably, and how you work that out in terms of any of your relationship is a personal thing. But obviously when it's unhealthy is when a relationship is more one-sided than the other. Mm. Mm. Yeah. This is a lovely conversation. So many different strands, aren't there? Different there ways. are, there are there. And it's lovely because I don't really, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I've barely spoken to you, you know, in one to one. So it's kind of a freshness, you know, your, your language, your way you look at things, and your, um, you know, your, your energy is so kind of free. I'm still kind of on a journey to free myself more, 
um, to be more fully the joy that I'd love to share more in the world. And, you know, for me, this is part of it coming out and having the audacity to, to talk about relationships. But, you know, I've had a life full of relationships, so I have learned a few things along the way. Yeah, um, the other point that the other thing that I wanted to talk to was like the masculine feminine dynamic in the in a relationship. And uh, I'm just wondering, yes. Sunday, whether because yeah. it's such a big topic, whether it might be better to move towards a close and maybe look at doing this again. Okay, um, I had the same thought that yeah. actually we could pick topic areas and talk. Yes. The, yeah. the legs off those topic areas yeah we? no it would be fun it would be really good fun and and uh you know hopefully also benefit of anyone who's yeah, following yeah. us this far um but yeah great thank you because it was your original suggestion and then i wasn't quite ready for it and then there'd be lots of uh, um obstacles and different things and we thought zoom wasn't going to be kind to us today so um thank you so much yeah, thank you, Susie. That's been a delightful conversation.